Congratulations! We have finally made it into the B tier missions! Uh, it feels a bit weird to be halfway through a rundown already and only just now playing something that isn't an A tier level, but I suppose that's alternate rundown 3 for you. The original rundown 3 was meant to take things a little slower after the insanity that was rundown 2, so it makes sense that the alternate version would follow the same trend. But difficult or not, we've got more missions to complete, so let's get back to work, shall we? Hello everyone, Professor Scaler here, and welcome to the alternate R3B1 level guide. Apologies if my voice sounds a little bit dead in this video, as I just got done playing a ton of Left 4 Dead 2 with some of my friends, and who oh boy, I was screaming quite a bit, so hopefully my voice will be able to last out this entire level guide. <laughs> But either way, as always, we're going to be starting off with the recommended loadout for this level, and this time around, that is going to be a bio tracker, a mind deployer, and two burst sentries. The reason I recommend the bio tracker is just the typical reason. We want some information about where enemies are located, and also the capability to tag them during alarms and other situations. So, bio tracker is helpful there. We're bringing a mind deployer as this will assist us for one of the alarm doors in this level, as well as both of the uplink terminals. But outside of those few moments, it's not really going to give us a whole lot of utility. So I would actually recommend that you put practically none or just no tour refill whatsoever into the mind deployer and save most, if not all of it, for the burst entries as they are going to be useful for every single moment in this level. And finally, when it comes to the burst entries, these are going to help us for the alarm doors in the level, especially the last three of them, as we will be using some funnel strategies. And they will help us a little bit during the uplinks as well, just to give us a little bit of extra firepower. That way, once all the enemies break down the doors that have the mines on them and they can actually make it into our room, they'll have some sentries as well as some of us that they have to go through in order to actually down anybody on the team. The reason why I recommend the burst sentries is just because I want something with a decent rate of fire that's also good at killing enemies off, which the sniper sentry could definitely fall into that category if we use biotracker symbiosis, but sometimes we're going to be placing our sentries a bit further away from us, so we can't always guarantee we'll have biotracker symbiosis active, which is why I prefer the burst sentries, and shotgun sentries are just a bit too close range and eh, they're okay right now, but they're still not as good as I would like them to be in order to recommend them for this level. Dropping down into level, you'll see that your main objective is to find two specific terminals and create uplinks with both of them. And these two terminals will always be located inside zone 235 and zone 236. And you and your team will be starting off inside zone 231. And when it comes to this first zone, there's not really a whole lot to take note of, sort of like it normally is in most levels you start off in. There will be a pretty fair amount of enemies spread throughout the many different rooms of the zone, as well as a decent amount of resources, so definitely keep an eye out for them. But there's nothing really too special like key cards or scouts or anything else I would really want to make sure you know about. So just make your way through, deal with the enemies, and collect those resources. And when you make your way to the far northern end of it, you'll find a security door to zone 232. This door is just simply a full team scan. So group up, deal with the scan, and then open the door and head inside. In there, you'll be able to find a few more enemies, both smalls and bigs, as well as more resources. And at the back end of zone 232, you'll be able to find a security door to zone 233. This security door, though, will have a class 4 alarm tied to it, so let's take a look at a map overlay so we know how to prepare for it. As you can see at the map, there's only one possible location enemies could spawn from. They're going to go through that open security door and then through this door right here to get into our room. So I highly recommend you shut that door, place a mine on it, and if you happen to find a seafoam grenade up to this point, Use a seafoam grenade just to reinforce the door a bit, and then you could place both of your sentries in the room with you facing towards the door, sort of like you could see myself doing in the background footage, and that's really all the defenses you need to do. If you happen to find a second seafoam grenade, I suppose you could use it here as well if you want to buy yourself a little bit of extra extra time, but it's not necessary by any means. Not even having a seafoam grenade isn't that big of a deal, you'll just have to deal with a few more enemies than you typically would. But get to work on the scans, deal with the enemies, and once everything's taken care of, pack up your sentries and you and your team can head inside zone 233. Zone 233 itself can sort of be seen as a central hub room. In here there will be a fair amount of enemies, including a scout patrolling about, there will be some resources we can resupply with, but more importantly, there are three different security doors. One to the west, which leads you to zone 234, one to the north, which leads you to zone 235, and one to the south that leads you to zone 236. And we have to go through all three of these security doors at some point. The northern and the southern one will lead us to our uplink terminals, and that western security door will actually lead us to where our extraction scan will appear once we finish both of the uplinks. And the thing is though, all three of these security doors have alarms tied to them. 
More specifically, the northern and the southern alarm doors will have class 3 alarms, and that one to the west is going to contain a class 5 alarm. And we have access to all three of them right here and now, and since opening up these security doors can open up new spawn locations for the other alarms, we want to ideally deal with all three of them back to back to back without opening up any of the security doors, that way we don't have to worry about being surrounded by enemies throughout the alarm. So my recommendation to you and your team is you start off with the security door to the north, zone 235, and do that class 3 alarm first. Which, as you can see with the map overlay, there are two different locations enemies can spawn from, the south or the east. And there are quite a few doors that are involved with this alarm, but we're going to be leaving most of them open. We're leaving all three of the southern doors open because we don't want any chance of them breaking down since we need them for the southern alarm. And when it comes to the two doors that lead into our room, we're shutting one of them, but we're leaving this door right here open because we want to guarantee that no matter where the enemy spawn from, they funnel into the room through this door. Which is perfect because now that we have a nice little funnel strategy, we can place down both of our sentries, sort of like you can see me doing in the background footage, and this will ensure that all the enemies have to go through them in order to get into the room, which will thin the herd out by a decent amount, making it much easier for us and the team. And once we finish this alarm, we're basically going to reverse it. As you can see with this map overlay for the southern alarm, enemies will spawn up north or to the east, and we're basically doing the same thing. Both of the northern doors are being left open as we want to preserve them, and when it comes to the three southern doors that lead into our room, we're shutting these two, but we're leaving this one right here open to guarantee that every single one of the enemies will go through that open door there. And as for our sentries, we just simply place them outside that open door, facing a little bit to the northeast. That way, no matter where the enemies come from, they have to go through the line of fire of both of the sentries. And once you finish this alarm, assuming you've been playing pretty well up to this point and you've actually been grabbing all the Torifel on the level, you should have enough in your sentries to deal with that class 5 alarm, which is really good. Because as you can see with this map overlay, if we don't open the northern or the southern alarm door, there's only one spawn location for these enemies, and that's way out to the east. So all we have to do is just place both of our sentries facing towards the open security door into our zone, and then that's it. All the enemies have to go through the open security door, so they go through both the sentries, and we can just focus on the scans. However, if you find yourself in a situation where you just simply don't have the resources to deal with the class 5 alarm now, it's no big deal. We can go into the northern and even the southern zones and grab the resources from in there and then deal with the class 5 alarm later. We just need to make sure that we deal with this alarm door before we finish both of the uplinks because once you finish both uplinks, an extraction alarm will initiate and we don't want to have to deal with that extraction alarm and the class 5 alarm at the same time. But for those of you who have to deal with this later and you do open up those zones, your map overlay is going to look like this. So we have enemies who can spawn from the east, the north, and the south. Thankfully though, because we preserved all of those doors in the earlier alarms, we can still utilize them here. So you're going to be shutting every single door in the zone except for these two right here. Because this makes it so that no matter what, all of the enemies have to go to the eastern side of the room first, which means when they come after us, they're either going to come through the middle of the room down below on the ground floor, or they're going to come through the middle of the room up above on the first layer of catwalks. In which case, all we have to do is place one sentry up above on those catwalks and one of them down below on the ground floor in the middle of the room facing towards the east. And this will make it that no matter what direction they come from, they have to go through the line of fire of at least one of our sentries in order to get to us. Follow this strategy and you should be able to deal with all three of the alarm doors one after another. And once you've completed all of them, open up the western security door. That way it is open and ready for you to come back later. There are no enemies or resources in there so you can just open the door and walk away. And then you can head either into zone 235 or 236 to get to work on the first uplink. Now, when it comes to zone 235 and 236, they're pretty similar to each other. There will be a lot of different rooms, there will be a fair amount of enemies, both smalls and bigs in all of these rooms. There will also be a total of two scouts per zone patrolling about, so be very careful of them, because alerting them can potentially break down some valuable doors we need for the upcoming uplinks. And of course, there will be resources for you to grab and resupply with. So thoroughly go throughout all of one of the zones, so 235 or 236, doesn't matter, you and your team can decide the order you want to do, or split up and do both at the same time, up to you guys. But just make your way through, deal with every single one of the enemies, clear out all of the rooms and grab all of those resources, and look for your uplink terminal. As both of these zones will have two terminals in them each, and I don't know if you can actually have the uplink terminal be all four of these potentially, or like all four of them are viable for it. Because in all the runs I've done, it's always been the same two terminals, one of them in 235 and one of them in 236. But just because I like playing it safe and I want to make sure you're all fully well informed, I'm going to treat it as if all four of these possible spawn locations can be the uplink terminal and show you four different map overlays. That way you have an idea of how to prepare no matter what your situation is. So if you have the northwestern terminal inside zone 235, your map overlay is going to look like this. 
There are two different spawn locations for enemies and quite a few different doors they could potentially go through, but there's only two that lead directly into your room, so I would recommend shut every single one of the doors I've labeled with this map overlay, and then these two doors right here, make sure that they are not only shut, but you also have a sentry facing towards each of them inside of the room with you. That way, you have your defenses spread out quite evenly, and no matter what route they come from, they have to go through doors, mine doors, and at least a sentry to get to you and your team. If you have the other terminal though, which is found a little bit further to the east, your map overlay is going to look like this. Still quite a bit similar as there are only two different spawn locations for enemies and once again, a few different doors they could potentially go through, but only two central doors that lead into your room. So shut every single one of the highlighted doors, make sure these two doors in particular are mined, and then same thing, one sentry facing towards each of them, and you should be good. If you have a seafoam grenade, by all means you could use it during either this uplink or the other one. I find that no matter what, all four of these possible positions are pretty much the same when it comes out to holding out defending against them, so it's completely up to you and your team when or if you want to use that seafoam grenade. As for zone 236 though, if you get the terminal that's in the southeastern corner, your map overlay is going to look like this, which is fairly simple as there's only one possible small location for enemies and they're always going to go through either one of these two doors to get into your room. Typically, they'll break down one of the two and then they'll just keep going through that one, so I would just recommend make sure both of the doors are shut, mine both of them, and then just have your sentries a little bit closer to you, facing towards that general direction, that way, no matter which door they take, they have to go through the line of fire of both of the sentries to get to you and your team. If you got the terminal that's a little bit closer to the west though, your map overlay is going to look like this, which might look a little bit weird because I've got the characters split up a little bit, but that's just because we have an open room divider in the area here, so ideally one person is sitting in the room with the terminal itself actually getting to work on that, and the other three people could defend in the room a little bit to the east, which is actually going to force the spawns even further away from you, so there's only one spawn location for the enemies. And when it comes to you and your defenses, I would just simply say make sure all three of these doors are shut and mined, and then the other doors in the zone are shut just to simply buy you time, and then have one sentry facing towards that northeastern door, and then one sentry facing down towards the southeastern doors. And that's really all there is to it when it comes to this level, actually, now that I think about it. Once you finish both of the uplinks, like I said, an extraction alarm is going to initiate. But all you have to do is just simply put in the fourth and final correct code on your second uplink and then just run away. You don't even have to wait for it to fully process. You just run away from the terminal, pack up the sentries quickly, and you could either deal with the uplink enemies are right there in your face if there are a lot of them, or you could just simply say, nah, just run right past them and make your way back into zone 233 and then go to the western end and get inside of zone 234. In there, your extraction scan will appear, and this extraction scan will take a little while to complete, but the amount of enemies coming after you with that extraction alarm isn't that much, so as long as you can all make it there together as a team and you have at least a little bit of ammunition, you should be fine. Hold out for a bit, and once that scan hits 100%, you are done and you have beaten Alternate R3B1. And that's all there is to it. Alternate R3B1 requires you to complete two individual uplinks in order to finish it but I find that the final three alarm doors in this level are far more challenging than the uplinks themselves. The uplinks are fairly easy to set up for even when going in blind if you just have some basic game knowledge, but having multiple alarm doors in close proximity can do a lot of damage with an improper loadout and poor planning. I've actually seen many groups struggle with the ending of this level because they don't plan ahead and they have to deal with the class 5 alarm while also dealing with an attraction alarm while also dealing with very few resources. As always though, thank you for watching this video all the way to the very end. I do hope that it was able to provide you with some assistance in beating this level. If you have any tips or tricks this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you want to say, please do let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and if you want to join my lovely community, there's a link to my Discord down in the description, as well as some other links you might be interested in. Among those links being one that will take you to the official GTFO merch store, which as always, I highly recommend you check out if you're a fellow GTFO enthusiast. Until next time, check your pockets for a seafoam grenade, as there's a certain enemy in the next level you'll want to save it for, and hopefully... I'll see you all in the next video.